Welcome to our YouTube channel in our basement. My name is Niels. And I'm Gail. We're going to be having conversations and share our thoughts about things that we're really passionate about. And just before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you like the content, then feel free to share it on your social media platform. All right. Thank you again for uh, joining us in our basement. Today, I'm excited to invite Ken McAllister from the Mortgage Group as uh, he is a mortgage broker and he has been my go-to when it comes to questions about finances along the way and he was someone who helped us uh, get our first home by hooking us up with a great mortgage. Yeah. Now, we recognize that with COVID-19, we're in the middle of some very difficult and financial times you know, it's it's been sad for many with some losing jobs, yeah. um, with uh, some having to rely on other, you know, different types of uh, financial resources, yeah. just a lot of, uh, you know, uncertainty from March, uh, even up until now. Yeah. And it's like, we have no idea when this is going to end and that which is really tough. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm really thankful that we've got Ken uh, today. And I've got to say, I'm really thankful for him, especially when we, uh, it was time to buy a house and it yeah, was like, totally. oh, what do we do? <laughs> and he's, he's just one of those great guys who's got advice and it's like, he's not just trying to make money. He's actually genuinely helping. And so I'm really yeah. glad to have him here today. Yeah. I think one of the things is like, you know, I appreciated about him, uh, along the way was that, um, you know, as we told him, hey, we're looking to purchase our first home. Well, rather than just simply like closing the deal and, you know, just like get in, get out. Um, you know, he took time to explain things yeah. along the way and educate us on the process and say, hey, Neil, you know, we're going to take this next step. But do you understand why we're taking this next step? Yeah. Like why it's um, important? Because I remember when we went to do... Um, uh, what's what's a when we went to see the bank to get pre-approved? That's the word. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, it was very much like we were in and out in an yeah. hour, yeah. Um, and such. But then with Ken, he just took the time to teach us so many great things. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, and so without uh, further ado, thank you so much, uh, Ken McAllister, for joining us today in our basement. It is such an honor to have you here on the show. Uh, one of the uh, goals of our podcast is to, uh, while, you know, we focus on healthy relationships with community and one another, we also want to encourage people on how they can take care of themselves. And Ken, I've known you probably since of almost 10 years. And um, I've known you from the time when which you were a financial coach as well. Now you're a, a mortgage broker. And so, you know, the COVID-19 season, uh, we're seeing a lot of interesting things happening with finances, people, you know, struggling financially, mm -hmm. but then also things happening with, with mortgages too. Uh, so I'm going to ask you the first question here, because I remember, uh, you know, as I said, you used to be a financial coach. And I'm so grateful for the times in which you've coached me, <laughs> uh, you know, with uh, giving off with financial advice, helping to pay off debts. And so yes. uh, as a former financial coach, you know, what initially got you into that and wanting to help people get out of debt? Uh, well, first of all, Neil, thank you very much for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I really appreciate that. Sure. And uh, it's a great opportunity. And uh, actually, I was a mortgage broker originally. Okay. And um, I started uh, my first job as a mortgage broker in the spring of 2007. Wow. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's been 13 years. And um, so the financial coaching opportunity came kind of as an offshoot of that mortgage business. I was working in a mortgage firm and this became a, it's kind of a, it was kind of an optional product that we have available, that we had available. Uh, so that's really what got me into it. It was, it was through the mortgage business. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Th that's awesome. And then, uh, so, uh, you know, what got you into, well, so yeah, you kind of shared how, you know, mortgage broker and then helping people get out of uh, debt and such yeah. like, um, what was your desire there and wanting to help people kind of like overcome that big step? Well, it's a good question. No one has the dream of owning a mortgage. 
Right. <laughs> people want to own a home, yeah. but people don't want to own a mortgage. So people need mortgages because most of us don't have cash to buy houses. So it's kind of a right. necessary evil. But at, at the end of the day, you really want to be out of debt. Mm. Right. Because uh, we're a slave to whoever we owe money to. Mm-hmm. So true. Right. So I mean, I'm a mortgage broker. So uh, obviously I'm helping people get into debt. But um, I was in the automobile industry for 19 and a half years prior to that. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, that was a good a good career. Um, but I was helping people buy something that does not go up in value. Mm. Mm, okay. Whereas real estate, at least in, in, in this area, um, it's going to keep its value over time. Right. Exactly. So I felt a lot better about helping people buy homes than cars. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Oh, that's amazing. But, ha- but, but once, yes, once you're a homeowner, you, you want to, you want to get out of debt. So I encourage people to pay off mm-hmm. debt. And even now when people have mortgages, I encourage them to take advantage of prepayments and ways to pay off that mortgage faster. I, I encourage them to do biweekly payments and, and little things like that. Um, that's how I encourage people to do. Hmm. So during this time we're in a pandemic Mm -hmm. and so a lot of people are not able to work or their hours are down and so what advice would you have to those who are finding this season financially challenging um, with the impact of covid because there's so many people that this is affecting yeah it's a good question um i think really staying calm is key Mm. okay um, I think having a source of hope for people is important. So I think people need to cling to something that's yeah. outside of themselves to have hope in, uh, because frankly, sometimes uh, things can feel kind of depressing and, and, and difficult, totally. right? And, um, and that's, a re- that's a real issue. Um, that's the real, that's a real um, side effect of some of what's going on. So, I don't know. It's, it's, it's um, the challenge is that we don't know the future. It's so uncertain, mm. you know, and, and uh, businesses and governments. Um, I was listening to, uh, I was in a meeting this morning with Calvin Gertson, our provincial uh, MLA and education minister for the province of Manitoba. And uh, right. he shared that even, even his government really can't really plan because they mm. don't, don't really know what's, what things are going to be like down the road. Yeah. So yeah, it's challenging planning in the future. So I think, what can you do? I think you just have to remain calm. Hmm. Um, you have to, I think, invest in um, important relationships. As difficult as that is, I think that's really, really critical. Huh. And um, I think just seek, seek a source of peace. I think that's really important. Seek a source of peace. You need to find that. Hmm. We need to find that somehow. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Uh, that, that's really good. I mean, like, it, it, it's just like, it sounds so simple. It's like to keep calm. Right. But yeah, at the same time, you know, it, it's, it, it can be very challenging with all the yeah. uncertainty, but yeah. you know, simple, find- but not simple, but not easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just letting that down and like, cause different people are able to find peace in different places. So it's like finding that place. What gives you peace? What mm-hmm. helps make you calm? And yes. So, yeah. That's, that's a tough one, but it's, it's very good advice. And I think it needs to be a priority, frankly. Mm. I think a priority in our day is, is starting the day or whatever the best time of your day is, yeah. is finding that time when you can um, invest in yourself, mm. right? By, by finding that calmness, finding that peace. And then, and then once you're there, then you can go on and, and, uh, and live your life. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, if, if we don't have that, that piece, we, we, uh, we can't. It's very difficult. And yeah, I'm not saying like, I'm an expert, but because, you know, it's stressful for all of us, right? Yeah, yeah for so many people, it's like they put out so much into the world or into mm. relationships with family and friends, but it's like they don't take care of themselves. Mm. And if yes. you're not healthy um, emotionally, spiritually, then that's going to take over you physically and you're not able to give out as much. Critical, critical, very good point, Gail. Mm-hmm. Self care yeah. is really important. Not self care for the sake of self care, right? But self care so that you know you can go on and then do some good, do something, encourage someone else. Yeah. That's what we need to do. We need to take care of ourselves so that we can go on and help others. Yeah, that's 100%. important. Because yeah. we can't we can't help others if 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 we're not in good shape ourselves. We need to be in good shape mm-hmm. emotionally, right? Yeah, totally. 
you know, Ken, um, this this might be a myth. I've heard that it's not wise, uh, kind of switching gears here, that it's not wise to do a credit check often because apparently your credit rating could take a hit. Now, is there any truth to this for when you have a credit check done? Like, is there a difference between doing, let's say, a credit check or like checking your credit score? I would say, yes, it, it, there is truth to that. Um, but I would say that there's actually two other factors that have a greater impact on your credit rating okay. than frequent credit checks. So yes, having your credit checked frequently in a short period of time can affect your credit score, but not nearly as much as two other factors, which are the biggest factors. Those two factors affect two thirds of your credit score, mm. whereas frequent credit checks affects roughly 10 to 15% of your credit score. So yes, it's a factor, but it's not a major factor. Okay. And, and what are the, the two factors that would affect it? Very good. <laughs> because well, I, I remember you've asked me this before and I, and I probably remember, but uh, we'll just go with you, the expert, because I know that we've talked over the years. <laughs> Most people know the first one. The first one is just pay your bills on time or early. Mm. Yeah, right. Yeah. Pay your bills on time. Don't have late payments. Don't have collections or bankruptcies. Just pay your bills on time. That's number one. That's the number one thing you can do to have a good credit score. Um, interestingly enough, you know, uh, banks care more about you missing your minimum payment on your credit card last month than they do if you had a bankruptcy two years ago. Hmm. They care more about that missed huh. payment last month than the bankruptcy two years ago. Do you know why? No. Well, yeah, why they care about recent history. Huh. Hmm. Banks want to know what have you done for me lately? They, they, they want clean credit in recent, they, they care about recent history. So time heals. Hmm. If you've had a bankruptcy or a, or a credit bruise in the past, well, time will heal that. Oh, wow. wow. Just don't miss your minimum credit card payment this month because that will yeah. hurt you for a year or two. Wow. So that's number one. Pay your bills on time and don't, don't, don't neglect or minimize those small minimum payments. Okay. The second biggest thing affecting your credit score is having a large amount of fallback. Oh, right. Yeah. To explain fallback, I'll just share the story of the fellow who had a, um, one credit card that was his only credit it had a $10,000 limit and he only owed $200 on that card. Huh, okay. $10,000 limit, $200 balance. So he had a fallback of $9,800. The difference between his limit and his balance owing. That is the second biggest factor affecting credit scores. Wow. Okay. Interestingly enough, in 13 years, I've never ever had someone tell me, yeah, my banker told me that. I don't yeah. want to bash <laughs> bankers here, but for some reason, people aren't getting this information from their banker. They don't get, I don't know why. So the opposite of having fallback is maxing out your cards. Okay. The right. worst thing you can do is owe more money than your limit. That's really, really, really bad. It's bad being at your credit limit. Mm -hmm. And it's also, you know, bad being close to your credit limit. You, you don't want to owe three quarters of your limit. You don't um, want to owe half of your limit. Right. You want to have, you want to owe at the, at the maximum 30% of your limit or less. So if you have a $1,000 credit card limit, you want to owe $300 or less. Oh, okay. Wow. Interesting. Better yet. If you have a thousand dollar credit card limit, you want to owe a hundred dollars or less. So you want to have a lot of room between your balance owing and your limit. Now people don't, again, they don't get that advice from their banks, mm -hmm. but that very much affects your credit score much more than frequent uh, credit checks. Hmm. And it's interesting what you say about uh, not getting that advice from your banks, because when I'm at Cineplex and I see the Scotiabank commercial come by and it says oh, you're richer yeah. than you think, I'm like, how? Yeah. Can you tell me, like, <laughs> explain it to me, sit down and tell me. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know that's good. Good slogan. <laughs> so, so how is it that, um, you know, let's talk about identi identity theft. Like, how is it that checking your credit score often potentially can protect against identity theft? Very, very good question. Um, I'm going to recommend a website called borrowwell.com. Okay, we'll make sure that um, we link to that in the description. Yeah, B-O-R-O-O-W-E-L-L.com. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a website that is free to use. Okay. They'll ask you a few personal questions uh, to gain entry. And they will, um, in terms of full disclosure, they will, there is a, they are there to try to sell you some credit products. Okay. But um, in my experience, they don't go over the top in that regard. They're, they're, they're not a hard sell. Mm -hmm. 
So anyway, once you, once you go to borrowwell.com, it's very simple. All you need is an email address and a password, and you can log into your own Equifax credit file. And Equifax is the most major credit agency in Canada. The okay. other major one is TransUnion. And Equifax is the one that most of the banks use the most. So borrowwell.com will access your own Equifax credit file, and it doesn't cost you a penny to do so. You can also contact Equifax. Okay. Uh, but there, if you want your credit file and your credit score, it will cost you. Ah, okay. uh, I see. Okay. Okay. Whereas if you go to borrowwell.com, uh, it won't cost you anything. And you can access that yourself as often as you like. It doesn't count as a credit inquiry. Interesting. Oh. Okay. When you access your own credit file, it does not count as an inquiry. When a mortgage broker or a bank accesses your credit file, then it does. Yeah. But when you access your own, it does not count. So you're allowed as a Canadian consumer, you have the right to access your credit file as often as you want. And I recommend people do that on a regular basis. In so fact, if, someone, if someone has never done that, they need to do it today. Do it today. Because it today. first of all, you might find an inaccuracy. You okay. might find you know, something, maybe there's sometimes a mix up with names. You might find that you don't have anything on your credit file. Um, there's all kinds of possibilities, right? So you want to know what your credit file says. You want to know what your score is and you want to make sure it lines up with what you think is reality. Wow. Okay. And if it does, if, yeah. then if it does, maybe check it every, you know, year or two. You don't have to check it crazy. Oh, okay. So not like checking it every week. That would no. Be too, like, no. No. If, if your credit is bruised. So if you have right. a bruised credit rating and you want to get it up, then uh, a monthly, monthly, monthly. check is, is important because then you want to see your progress. Okay. And then it's actually encouraging to see your score go up, right? Yeah. So, and again, it won't, it won't damage your credit score. It does not affect it because you have the right as a Canadian consumer to check your own credit file as often as you like. That's a, that's a consumer protection we yeah. have. Yeah. That's really nice. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. awesome. So borrowwell.com. Awesome. Yeah, we'll yeah. link to it for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, right now we saw the – it was posted on Facebook and we got really excited, but we're not buying a home. So it <laughs> right. doesn't affect us, but yes. why are mortgage rates so low at this time? Uh, yeah. That's a very good question. Do um, you have any idea? <laughs> yes. Well, there, there are two different types of mortgage rates. There are fixed rates right. and there are variable rates and they're actually, um, connected to different drivers that drive them. Many people think they're connected to each other. They're actually not. Okay. Fixed rates are directly affected by the bond market. Variable rates are set by the Bank of Canada. Oh, okay. Okay, so variable rates are set by the Bank of Canada and um, the Bank of Canada uh, makes a decision on Wednesday whether they're going to increase or decrease the prime rate and, that's, and variable rates are set off of that. Huh. Whereas fixed rates depend on the bond market and it has to do without getting super technical. It's just basically a supply and demand issue. Okay. And at the end of the day, uh, investors in bonds and or mortgages want a return. Okay. So it's, it's simply supply and demand that determines those rates. Hmm. So yes, rates, fixed rates are now um, lower than they have been in the history of the country. Ever. Yep. Fixed rates. Wow. Fixed mortgage rates. Wow. Mm -hmm. So with those rates at the lowest they've ever been, yeah. yes. um, do you have any advice for those who might be looking to buy a new home during yes. this time in the middle of pandemic? Yes. There is a, there's a flip side. I'll give you the, the bad news now. Um, <laughs> housing pricing is strong. Oh, okay. So it's difficult to find deals out there because there's, there's uh, listing, listing inventories are low. Okay. Oh, if you're looking market. for a home nowadays, you, you'll find there's not a lot on the market. So therefore, people that have a home for sale, um, they can kind of hold out and get their price. Okay. Which, which is great if you're selling a home. Yeah. Right, totally. But if you're selling a home and then buying another one, you're going to get hit when you buy. So it, you don't win. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But if yeah. you're selling and then just – retiring or you know right and then whatever um then you can you can do well right now so so pricing right now is is pretty pretty good on on home so um if you bought a home a while ago even a few months ago it's probably already appreciated in value 
Hmm. So that's the, the downside of anyone buying now. Yes, the, the interest rate um, will be low, but it's, it's tough to find a, a, um, a super, you won't, there's not a whole lot of bargains out there. Oh, mm. I see. Okay. Yeah. So it, what that means is that um, I, would, I would say if you're deciding between renting or buying and wondering what's better, I would say it depends on how stable you think you are going to be. Mm, okay. And if you think you may be moving within a year or so somewhere else, then I would say maybe you shouldn't buy because if you have to sell them within a year, mm. you, you, may, you, may have, you may lose. So then right? for people who are like us, I mean, we're not moving nope. <laughs> right. and, and anytime soon, but like people who are in our situation, there's a lot of people who are military families oh, right. yeah. and they're going to be posted every few years, mm-hmm. potentially mm-hmm. Yep. three to six years <laughs> or whatever. Yep. Um, what advice would you have to those people who are moving every few years? I mean, it just, it's just part of what you have to do. And, and mm-hmm. I know the military provides programs and support for, for, for their staff. Totally. Um, so, I mean, if, if you have to buy, you have to buy. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's not like housing is, is gone up double. I mean, they're just the prices are, are, are a little stronger than they have been in the past. Yeah. That's all. Um, so and that, so all, what I'm saying is you may, if you're buying now, you may pay a little bit more for your home than you would a year ago, but mm-hmm. you've got a really low interest rate. So just hang on to it for a while. Don't, don't you know, hang on to it, right? Because um, the longer you hang on to it, the greater chances you'll you'll uh, at least get out of it when you're selling. Mm. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, you know, Ken, thank you so much for, just for joining us today and for answering these questions. Um, <laughs> I think one of the things I've really appreciated about you over the years is that um, if I have a question for you, you'll always take the time to educate me and sit me down <laughs> or, you know, or to do something like this, or like yes. you really, you really want to make sure that I understand what I'm getting into. I find that if I'm dealing with someone else or someone from the bank, uh, they might teach me a little bit, but it's kind of like, get me in and get out. Um, <laughs> and just, you know, <laughs> I'm richer than I think, right? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, so like I remember, like you know, last year, just when we were uh, looking to purchase uh, this home, you know, part of me wondered at the end of our conversation. I was just like, I, I just can't believe that you know, Ken would even take the time to, to mm-hmm. teach me that. Yet, it was actually just so important and so mm. good that I, that I learned um, what I was doing, or you know, and everything that was going on. Yeah. Thank you so much. (laughs) Well, my pleasure. I love helping people. And I think it's good to deal with people that are helpful. Mm. Right. Because I think if we're all, if our goal for all of us is out there to help somebody, Mm -hmm. give somebody a hand, cheer somebody up, encourage someone, uh, tell, tell someone the truth, even though it may be unpopular or whatever you need to do, whatever it is you can do for someone else. um, Yeah. Go, go do it. Mm. Be a good person. for sure. (laughs) Well, Ken, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to link to, we'll make sure to link to borrow well, uh, in the show notes and, um, we'll link to your, uh, Facebook like page as well. And so, uh, yeah, yeah. Ken McAllister from the mortgage group. I just want to thank you so much just for joining us, uh, today in our basement. (laughs) Great to be here. Niels and Gail, all the best. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ken, yeah. for joining us. I mm-hmm. really appreciated um, some of that advice that you gave. And I think one of the big things that is so important is, you know, we are in this time of a pandemic and there's so much uncertainty with money. Yeah. Um, but what we need to do is to find that place of calm and peace and Everybody finds that calm and peace in different places. And so it's just finding that what brings you that calm and that peace and just letting go and self-care. And yeah, that's what we talk about here is we want Mm -hmm. to create um, advice on taking care of yourself because that's so important. If you are giving out too much you are not able to take care of yourself Mm. and you are becoming weaker and you're not able to give out as much as you want to. And so I just, I encourage you to find what gives you that peace and that calm. Yeah. And um, I just, I just want to read um, a Bible verses, you know, we also like to give things from a Christian perspective. And so one of the things that things that's been foundational, even with us as we, uh, you know, we're paying off some some debts at yeah. the beginning of our marriage was, you know, um, 
It was, um, we're adults, and we're <laughs> mom and dad are not paying for things anymore, and oh, right. shoot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So so the big thing was, is just, you know, for us, it was like, how do we honor God with our finances? Yeah. And I want to read from Proverbs 13, verse 11. I'll read two, two translations for, for it. Uh, one is the uh, ESV, English Standard Version, which says in Proverbs 13, 11, wealth gained hastily will dwindle. But whoever gathers little by little will increase it. Now, mm. the New Living Translation uh, words it even more bluntly, <laughs> which says, Wealth from get-rich-quick schemes quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows over time. Wow. And so and so that's, re- that's really good advice. Uh, good advice is just... Um, you know, make those decisions uh, today that will yeah. affect the long term. Yeah. And I I want to add, too, about, you know, when we were first married, we had um, some debt. Mm-hmm. And it was like, OK, we need to be honoring to God and get rid of this debt and pay it off yeah. and to work hard. And so something that we were able to do is we decided, OK, we need to make a budget yeah, totally. of how much we actually need to spend mm-hmm. and not just spend our money on whatever we want to. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so um, we started or we were collecting our receipts, but it was like, um, yeah, let's just stick it in a bag and we don't need to deal with it anymore. But um, what we really started to do was collecting our receipts and um, what we we put it in a box. Oh, yeah. And so at the end of every month, um, what I do is we collect the receipts. We organize them into different categories and to see, like, how much are we spending on groceries? How much are we eating out? How much are we spending on coffee? Mm-hmm. How much are we going shopping for clothes like and gas? And it's just like those are important things that so many people spend or that most people spend a lot of money on. Right. And it's just keeping yourself accountable to okay what can i afford and it gives more room to be able to pay off that minimum or more debt and to be able to have what ken talked about with um that fallback by doing that you also you know by uh paying off things or even just um uh tracking like you know that budget i think what i was what i'm trying to say is is that you know essentially where every dollar is is going and And it's like where's every penny going i mean we don't have pennies in canada anymore but (laughs) right (laughs) yeah (laughs) well you know we hope that um today's podcast made sense yeah or dollars (laughs) but um we we haven't had any uh puns from you in a while (laughs) no yeah exactly it's (laughs) I, I, I tend to throw them in there every yeah. now and then. I got to cash in on them. Love this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I hope that you guys can appreciate his puns and don't roll your eyes too much. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Ken, thank you again so yes. much for, uh, for for joining us today. And to our viewers or listeners, if you have questions, you know, drop yeah. them in the comments. And uh, and maybe Ken will even get back to you on on some of that. And yeah. so, yeah. and we're gonna put the link to that borrow well and to his personal. Um, yeah, yeah. If you're th- looking for uh, um, a mortgage, and you know, yeah, and he's really good at it. So. Yeah, exactly. We'll link to his profile, <laughs> yeah. and you can get connected with the mortgage yeah. group. Well, okay. Thanks for joining us. In, in our, our basement. basement. Thanks for joining us today in our basement. Yeah, and before you go, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and share this content in your social media platforms. And we hope to see you next time in, in our, our basement. basement.